Hello chess lovers, Sonnen here and in this video I want to share with you a fantastic game played at the ongoing Russian higher league. On the white side is Russian chess grandmaster Artyom Zimafeyev and Russian woman grandmaster Polina Shuvalova is playing with the black pieces and we will go through the game from her perspective. Earlier I have already shared with you an amazing game which Shuvalova played at 2019 World Youth Girls Chess Championships against Anna Afonaseva, but uh, here is another one where she is going to create another masterpiece. By the way, in case you missed the above mentioned game against Afonaseva, the link I will pin in the comment section. That game raised a huge interest and you will enjoy it greatly. So we are in round 6 and Timofeyev who had white pieces opened up with Zuckertort opening knight f3. Shuvalova answered with knight f6, d4, e6, bishop g5. White is going for, how is this called, Tory attack. Yeah, the Tory attack can be rarely seen at the top level and statistics suggest that it's not particularly advantageous for white. Due to its calm nature and relative lack of theory, usually the players are avoiding this, but in this case, uh, the reason that Zimofeyev decided to choose this opening was that he wanted to drag his opponent out of preparations. He decided to use this as a surprise weapon. So, an exchange on f6 followed, knight bd2, and this is how white is placing his knights in Torre attack. Then white is choosing between two setups. He's either playing e3 followed by bishop d3, or, and then for example, c4, or c3 bishop d3 e4. Now, in the game we see e3, uh, setup starting with e3 and then bishop d3. Uh, meanwhile black is going for the fianchetto of the second bishop, first strengthening the pawn and f3. Uh, so white is undermining these pawns but is doing it at the cost of weakening his king's side. f3 was made with d6, knight e c4, g takes f3, knight takes, bishop b7. Yeah, uh, white's king's side looks vulnerable, while in black's case, black can castle king's side, uh, queen's side, sorry, no problem at all, knight h7. This is already somewhat dubious. Well, the knight on the rim is dim, playing bishop e4 is better. It's okay to give up this pawn on h4, you know? Uh, instead we see knight h7, knight d7, queen takes h5, uh, rook g8. Winning this pawn exposes the king too much, you know. And also now black will win this pawn, black is just doing great. And so black castle the queen side, black king is in safety, while wow, there are lots of problems to solve in white's camp. Look at this monster on b7 which soon is going to play a key role in the attack. And so by castling queenside, black is also sacrificing this pawn on f7, right? Let's see how is this madness going to end up. Rook takes f7 and we have... How should we proceed? Can you find black's next move? Well, in return let's go for rook takes g4. If you win black rook, then you will lose your rook. And if you also win this bishop, then rook g8 check will follow and soon white king will fall victim. Materially black is managing to equalize plus black has a devastating attack. I really don't like white's position. Uh, after queen takes f7, actually white should play rook f1, but even in this case there is little hope of saving this position. Here is one of the possible ways how black can prevail. Yeah, black is just winning a piece. Uh, let's go back. In the game after rook takes g4 check, we see king h2, and there comes rook g2 check. Now can you see how strong is this bishop on b7, king h3? And so this is the key moment in the game where, please, give a try to find on your own how should black proceed with the attack. Uh, ready? Well, this is a very important moment where you should make a decisive decision. And here we go, it's time for a queen sacrifice, rook g8. How do you like this beauty, guys? 
Uh, white accepted the queen's sacrifice and we have bishop takes e7. Right now the threat is rook g3 checkmate. White covered that square with knight f1 and rook g1. And now for example rook h1 check followed by bishop g2 checkmate can be a threat. d5, knight e5, rook d1, king d8. I guess one of the reasons of playing king d8 is to free the c8 square for the bishop. But uh, bishop takes d5 is playable as well. Anyways, we see king d8, queen e2, bishop takes d5, e4, bishop c6. W looks like that white managed to neutralize black's light squared bishop, which was playing a key role on the long diagonal. But there is no defense, you know, here black rook retreated on g7. We have a mating threat, and after queen h5, Shuvalova made a move and forced a resignation. That move is... Uh, rook takes h7. Did you manage to find it? If queen takes h7, then knight f3 check, and then knight g5, and black is just a piece up, also a pawn up. This is an easy win, that's why at this point, after rook takes h7, resignation followed. A very, very impressive game by Shuvalova, which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. I guess there were too many complicated lines in this attack which I didn't cover. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I just tried to keep the game analysis as simple as possible without delving too deep into the jungle of those endless variations. Uh, in the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces. Actually, there is a forced mate in 5 and as usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.